So this is the book or the letter by Abu Uthman, better known as Al Jahiz, the great black scientist, uh, some say father of evolution, who Darwin learned from. This is a letter or a book he replied back to some very uh, racist anti-black Arabs who had some bad things to say to black black people at black Africans during uh, 700 800 AD during the beginnings of Islam uh, but you could see the uh, racism already some key things here uh, some definitions the Zanj Zanj the Abyssinians the 40 and uh, a few other terms uh, relate to black people so the Zanj really quick or Tanzanians, Kenyans from around uh, the, uh, the Eastern Africa. Um, the Zanj comes from Tanzania, so Zan, Tanzan, Zan, Zan, Zan became Zanj, and that's the uh, Zanj who they refer to. Um, there's a 40 who are the Zanj who went into Iraq as slaves and actually overthrew the uh, powers there and created their own settlement there. But of course, they were Islamic, so they made peace. That's the 40. And uh, the Abyssinians are, of course, the modern-day Ethiopians, um, who we call Ethiopians in ancient times. They were called Abyssinians, just so you know who that is. Uh, so, to continue, this is uh, Abu Uthman's glory of the blacks, glory of the Zanj over the whites, or over the Arabs. And some other key terms we'll speak of here, uh, some key events. They speak of... Uh, Yemen, Arabia, being under control of the blacks at one time. They refer to that. And they also do a referring to uh, Arabs actually being known for sleeping with their donkeys, sleeping with their sheep, uh, bestiality, and a bit of homosexuality as well. Uh, okay, so here we go. The Greatness of the Blacks over the Whites, the Arabs, by Abba Uthman, al Jahiz. Al Jahiz, real name Abu Uthman Amir Aben Bahar Al Kanani Al Fukwami Al Basari, born in Basra 781 to December 868, was a famous Arab scholar believed to have been of Afro Arab of East African descent. He was an Arabic prose writer and author of works on Arabic literature, biology, zoology, history, early Islamic philosophy, Islamic psychology. Mutazal theology and political religious polemics. Al Jahiz Al Fakari Al Sudan Min Al Abayad, or the superiority of the blacks to the whites. In the name of the Almighty Merciful God, may God protect you and keep you. Let him make you obey him and make you part of his favorites. You mentioned, may Allah protect you from deception that you read my treaties on the refutation of the pure Arabs to those of mixed parentage, these replies of the mixed ones and the answers of their maternal uncles. But I did not mention in it anything about the boasts of the Sudan. So now may Allah preserve you that I postpone that intentionally. And you mentioned that you would like me to write to you the boast of the Sudan. So I have written what I recall of their boast. al Asami, I said, al Fazari, a slave is a Fazari, who had a pierced earlobe that is known to have said, harmony arrives quickly in the creation. Because of that, goats stay away from the sheep as long as there are goats around. The lamb avoids the predators and also does not feel close to the ones with big hooves. Abu Zaid al Nawahi recited the following verse Without harmony, man perishes. Sadid al Harati with arudut eloquence tells I requested from a black slave of the desert steppe To whom do you belong, O black one? To the Lord of Hyder, O bald person. Aren't you black? Aren't you a bald person? This truth thus puts you so much in anger. It is this truth which puts you so much in anger. Do not insult and you will be dreaded. Really best is then you give it up completely. Sadud concludes. In truth, 
At the time when I addressed the word to her, I thought to be worth all the inhabitants of Nagad, and at the time when she left me, I had the thought not to be worth my slave. al reports according to Isi Umar these words of dul ay -Ruma, that Allah curses the black slave of the family of such and such, that she speaks well and that she is eloquent. I asked him, how is the rain which falls on your place? She answered, we received it as far as we wanted it. Qualities of the Blacks Among the Blacks there is Luqman, the wise one, and it is him which said, there are three men who are known to us only in two circumstances. He who preserves his control in anger, the courageous one in the face of danger, the friend when you need him. He gave his son the following advice. If you wish to remain with someone, make him angry before that. You will learn in advance if he is just and good. This is the only quote of him we regularly hear because he had too many sayings to choose from. More important than this is that God called him the wise in the Quran as well as his testament to his son. Sayyid Ibn Jubar was also black. He got killed by Hajjaj at the age of 49 and a half a year before Hajjaj himself died at the age of 53. Said was a very pious man, highly esteemed for his profound knowledge of the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad and a companion of Ibn Abbas. The Hadith scholars doubt even all Hadith who come from the companions of Ibn Abbas except those of Said Ibn Jubar. His father was a Marathi of the Asad tribe and said himself was a Marathi of the Umayyads. After he was killed, people felt the loss. Also among the blacks was the Ethiopian Bilal, of whom Caliph Omar said that he alone was worth a third of all of Islam. Afga, the first to die in the holy wars of the Prophet El Migdad, the first to fight in the holy war as a horseman El Wanshi, was killed the false prophet Musalima, known as the liar. He had the habit to say, I have murdered the best one of all men, meaning Hamza I bid I bid Al Mutalib, may God peace rest on him, and I killed the worst of men, namely Musalami the imposter. And another black, Makul, the lawyer, and another black, El Haikwaton, the poet, who was higher than the others through his personal judgment, his reason and by the size of his insights, it is him who said in connection to friends, the friend is recognized when one shares intimacy of the heart and when one accompanies one on a journey, and another black, Gulabib, on whom the transmitter said how the envoy of Allah, how the blessings and the safety of Allah are on him, left to carry out a raid and after it asked companions do we not miss somebody they answered we seek such and such then he left again and asked them again do we not miss somebody they answered we seek such and such then he left again and asked them again isn't there somebody missing they answered for the third time we do not seek anybody the prophet said as for me I miss Gulabib seek him they went to seek and found him lying in the middle of seven men which he in fact had killed. The prophet that the blessing and the safety of Allah are on him said he killed seven men and they killed him. This man is of me and me of him. The hadith specialist adds, then the prophet held him in his arms until one had dug for him a tomb without him having no other bed than the arms of the prophet. We do not know if they were able to watch him before the burial. One of the blacks was Faraj, the barber surgeon, who was so just that he was often called by the judges for counsel. He was a freedman of Jafar ibn Suleiman. 
He served Jafar many years cutting his hair and beard. Jafar had never found him making mistakes in what he did or said, so he decided to test him. If it really turns out his behavior is a result of inner wisdom, I will make him free, find him a wife, and make him rich. If things turn different, I will have to take other steps. And one day when Faraj was cupping him, he asked, Slave, do you cup yourself? Yes. And when? When I need some? Do you know when you need some? I know it most of the times, but sometimes it happens to me to make me an error. What do you eat? And in winter of sweetened big dakbara, and in summer sikbaga, bittersweet. Gafar Solomon kept his promise, and in this connection to that, Abu Faram said, Out of the way, my wife is in front of me. I am very close friend of Faraj, the lawyer of suction cups. One says Faraj had acquired such a reputation of impartiality and nobility of heart, of piety and religious scruple that his owners, the descendants of Gafar, and the notable ones of Merbad, required his testimony only for healthy businesses and without dispute. As for El Hakwatan, he is the one who wrote the poem used in Yemen when arguing with the Karish and the Mubar, the same poem the people from Persia and Ethiopia used against the Arabs. When the white poet Jarir saw El Hukwatan in a white robe on a feast day, he remarked, he looks like the penis of a donkey wrapped in white paper. Al Hukatan replied to him in a poem in which he said, Though my hair is woolly and my skin black as coal, I am generous and my honor shines. My color does not prevent me from being valiant with my sword in battle. Now, no, you would boast of your petty glory. The people of the Nagus have more reason for glory than you. In the days that Islam was offered to El Julande Ibn Kesra, Harith, Hadwa, the Copts, and Caesar, they all refused. Of all the kings, only the Nagus accepted. As a result, his kingdom lasted long, unmovable and prosperous. Lokman was one of them. So too were his son and his mother's son, as well as Arabha, the most renowned king. Abu Yuksum's invasion threatened the existence of your country, and yet you were as numerous as the grains of sand, and more still like the water birds, when on them fell in a deserted country. The bird with the bent claws and gray of color, if another than Allah had wished to push back Abra, you would have noticed. That one which has the most experience of men is the closest to the facts. There is no claim to fame except that you live opposite the sanctuary and that you lit fires in its vicinity. If one of your chiefs concerned his honor advances against us or we face him or he turns the back to us and as for what you say that it is about a divine prophecy you do not know to protect the sanctuary surrounded by veils you claim to be a tribe never subjugated and never paying tribute but it is simpler to pay a tax than to flee it is a sovereign had wanted to seize it then the himyar and their mequal would have come there one cannot stay there neither in summer nor in winter and it is water, it is far from spouting out as in Guta. There is neither place pleasant to the eye nor hunting ground, but only the trade. And the trade is a disdainful thing. Aren't you, Greer, a puppy? And your mother, is she not a oo? Fat sheep are the source of your shame and your vanity. As for the verses, Gulanda, the sons of Chisoras, Harat, Hawada, the cop and the worthy Caesar said no to Islam. Then he is referring to the time when the prophet wrote to the Banan Julanda, but they refused to listen, as was the case with the Chasros of Harith ibn Abal Shamir, of Huwandi ibn Ali al Hanafa, of the Maquaz, the patriarch of the Copts and ruler of Alexandria and of the emperor of the Byzantine, Caesar. However, the Banna Mulada became Muslim. Sometime later, 
there were the Negus became Muslim before the conquest of Mecca and so retained his dominions while God took away the treasures, meaning provinces, from the others. The Emperor of Byzantium, his diminished empire still exists, but he has been driven from every place where the hooves of horses can tread. What rest him are bays, the high mountains, the strongest castles, the cold places, and the rainy, windery ones. The poet also talks proudly of Luqman and his son. When the poet says Abu Yuxam invaded the very heart of your country, and this despite the fact that you were as numerous as the grains of sand, he alludes here to the lord of the elephant whose armies attacked Mecca to destroy the Kaaba. The poet says, you were as numerous as the grains of sand, so why did you flee from him? None of you withstanding him until the, he reached Mecca. Mecca is the mother of the cities. The Arabian Peninsula is the homeland of the Arabs, and Mecca is one of its towns, but an important and ancient one. Because of that, it is considered the mother of the peninsula. That is why with the conquest of conquest is meant the conquest of Mecca. Similarly, the Fatai of the book is called the mother of the book. It happens that the Arabs say of a thing that this is the mother of what it did not generate. Thus the expression he hid him on the top of his head of the same mother of hell. The host calls his hostess my hospital mother, a Bedouin, having been bitten by fleas at a woman of which he was the host, says Ragaz. O oh, hospital mother, that your face is saved to me, and that the supreme master delivers me from your residence and of the bites of fleas which I see it, I will make me die. I spent the night to scratch me, to scratch myself, as scrapes itself a scabrous camel, during the rest, Allah, how he is exalted, clarifies Mecca and the temple when he says, In truth, the first temple which was founded for people is certainly that located in Baca temple, blessed and direction for the world. The poet wants to say, When Mecca, mother of the city's place of the holy temple, and your claim to fame was the object of raids, it is you all which were the subject, the object of raids. As for the verses, the poet and as for what you say it is about a divine prophecy you did not know to protect the sanctuary surrounded by veils you claim that your people have never been subjugated or paid tribute but paying that you will find easier than fling this is why the poet Ibn Ibn Al-Arabas says they refuse to submit to the kings and are a free people when they hear the call of war they go what he said what he says means you say you pay no tribute, but paying is easier than fleeing, and you surrender although you enormously outnumber your enemies. When the poet says, your country is not nice in the winter or summer, nor is there abundant water like in Juthia and Bahran, he means conquering Mecca would never have brought profit, otherwise Yemen and other countries would have. The climate is bad, and winter its people go to Taif during the heat in Jidea and nothing in Mecca can compare with the lushness of Juthia. When the poet says there is no grazing for the male oryx, nor hunting either, only trading places and trade is never a right occupation. He means Mecca has no lush green places, hunting is prohibited. There are only merchants, which have no good reputation. He also says that the people of Mecca lack strength, and kings refrain from taking their means of living because they would not satisfy a king. Those from Mecca are unable to protect themselves because of this. The poet Mawahi, I been Awas, said, I bought in a shop more than one goatskin flask of wine. As swarthy as a man with the dark skin, I folded back the opening of it. On the neck folded back, it resembled a mutilated hand. I carried them to a greedy Arab merchant or a wine merchant bearing earrings and with crippled Arab. All of these verses refer to the Karisha. They say that the Karisha are merchants who seek the protection of the sanctuary, and when they travel they carry the fruit of the palm tree and the bark of the trees so that they are recognized and that nobody kills them. The poet says, Are you not a member of the Kuyaliba tribe? Isn't your mother one of their sheep? Your fat sheep are both your pride and your shame.
it is rumored that the Kalad tribe is having intercourse with their sheep, just like the tribes of El Araji and Suliam, and the people of Eshija are rumored to have intercourse with goats. El Najashi said, if only one of the tribes of the Karish had degraded me other than the goat buggers Sulem and Aisha. Al Farazdik said, as long as I live, I will never be able to bring as sacrifice the milk sheep that belongs to the Araj. After spending my money, I may find that the animal gives birth to a boy. Another poet, if you want more money for your female donkey, just tell the Dur Durami that you sell it. He will kiss its back, for but for its dryness would draw near to its buttocks. The Durami, when he copulates with a donkey, wants his mouth to reach the animal's mouth. Abed Abin Rashid said, They are bad people. The best of them are still bad. To the sheep they herd, they are the male and the shepherd. When one of their women is made ready for marriage, it will be the spotted sheep that weeps sincerely. This is why El Hayadi said, Kamil, enjoy your ooze, O Gerir, because your heart encouraged you only with the depravity and loneliness. This is why El Hakwatan says, Are you not a puppy? And your mother, is she not a ooh? Fat sheep are the source of your shame and your vanity. As for shame, it is about their bald, their bad reputation and connection with the ooze. As for their claim to fame, the poet makes it clear that when they are prevailed of something, it is ooze. It's still, they would arrive to the camels. Among the claims to the fame of the blacks of Zanj and Abyssinians, in addition to the fragment of the al Hakotin poem, which we have mentioned, it is necessary to count after Gurir al Hatafi, who turned against the Banu Taleb, do not seek really any material uncle at Taglib, because Zanj have maternal uncles nobler than them. The verses of Sanaa. Reba, which in anger turns to Gurir and against him glorifies the Zanj. Why does the animal of the Khalid talks bad about us? He has seen he is no match for Hajib and Iqbal. Somebody who compares the donkey called Marag and her son to Fadak is unreal and beyond understanding. If you would meet Zanj in formation for battle, you would see noble heroes. Ask Ibn Amir when he sought out their spears. Did he not find the Zanj spears to be long? They took the son of Zayed, and they dismounted their horses for battle. And when they have dismounted to go to battle, what a battle. They left in their courtyards the horses of war while you had only sheep and lambs in your quarrels. Ibn Nakba, a warrior, and your ranks was one of the blacks. So was Kufaf, who had many problems to take care of, and the two sons of Zubaya, and Tari, and Harasi. We don't see other people like that in your ranks. Ask Ibn Jafar, when he marched against our homeland, how destructive they were when they attacked him. Anus Saluk called the lion or the respected Abbas. When they attack, they all outshine you completely. Among them is also Ibn Kazim Ibn al-Jari. He surpassed all the tribes in courage and in honesty. They were all the noble women, the sons of noble women, who were on they, their turn descendants of noble women. They are the lions who bring up their little ones. And so, are we nobler than the Kalub because of our maternal uncles? You, however, you are viler than them under the same report. And the sons of Halubab, who are people who can strike a lance or to nourish you. In winter, when the wind of the north blows, the Ibn Amir, of which we talked, is half Zaid Amir al Ataki. He replaced his father as the head of the Al Haggad police force. When Rabir Zara as Zengi seized the area of the Euphrates, Hafk Zaid went to, then to meet him. Rabi killed them. 
him and his men and pillaged his camp. As for Ibn Gafir, it is a new man. Gafir Ubad Gafir Julandi or Julandi. They had made an incursion in Zanj territory. The Zanj killed them and plundered the camp. Then the poet speaks about the sons of the Zanj woman. When they draw towards the Zanj in bravery and self-esteem, he mentions then Huf ben Nadbar, Abis Maradis, the two sons of Zadad and Tari El Fawas, and his brother Harasi, as well as Suluk ben Asalaki. The latter lions among the men have the boldest hearts, the most intrepid courage, and they passed in proverb. One counts among the sons of the Zanj woman, Abid Alal Hazim al Sulami, and the sons of the Al Hubab Amir Hubab and his brothers. Al Jahif Ibn Hakim was one of them too. They are also proud of Raban, Balal's brother, because of his piety. Also, Mir Ibn Fa'ai, who was at Barir and died a martyr's dead on the day of Baramaoni. And those present saw him being raised up by God up from the earth to heaven. So he has no grave among us. Among the blacks is also Yasir's family. They also say Al Gandalf, who was with Ubayyad Ali Abin A. Hunar, was one of us. He was the most courageous among men. He would attack caravan single handed. Also, a man with proverbial courage was Kubwa, who was with Al Magrai Abin Al Fazari Mur Al Azami. The young slave of General Abu Bahari was black too. He came home from Syria in the days of Qutayab ibn Muslim. His reputation was so widespread that people tried not to meet him. Also among them was al Muqal and his sons, who though slaves were very generous and wise and were renowned among the men of the desert about their knowledge of it. Also among us was Afal, who attacked caravans or Khorasan single-handedly for 20 years. Malik ibn al Arab killed him after he had sodomized him in the middle of the night when he was too intoxicated and unarmed. The verses of his son testify about the twilight. He, Malik, if Afal had not been drunk, you would have seen undoubtedly that he is brother of the Rasat Red Lion and even the Eclipse blacks continue coming from Abyssinia. We were masters of the country of Arabia up to Mecca and on all the country our law reigned. We put to rout the Nawas killed by the Aquali Himarites. You, you never dominated our country. Your poet says, Toilo, they ruined Gummond and threw its roof down. Rayat and his troops by an impetuous attack with force, the Abyssinians encircled it at night and threw down a construction built by the Equal at in remote times a multitude of black color coming from Al Guksum, such as the lions of Das Sarar, which would have been wearing a leopard skin. At we count among us Caleb Geli, no one of those who went up to Solomon channel and who fought in singular combat did resemble him. They continue also the forty or ours who revolted at the time of Qadi Sawar Abed Allah in the area of the Euphrates. They drove out their dwellings the populations of this area and went down into an immense massacre of the inhabitants of Bualale. They the one who did cut the head of Asal Abin Jafir in Oman with a Barahani scythe when all were afraid was one of us. Everybody knows that the Zanj are among the most generous of mortals, a quality that is found only among noble characters. These people have a natural talent for dancing to the rhythm of the tambourine without needing to learn it. There are no better singers anywhere in the world, no people more polished and eloquent, and no people less given to insulting language. All other peoples in the world have their stammers, those have difficulty in pronouncing certain sounds, and those who cannot express themselves fluently or are downright tongue-tied, except the Zanj. Sometimes some of them recite before their ruler continuously from sunrise to sunset without needing to turn round or pause in their flow. No other nation can surpass them in boldly strength and physical toughness. One of them will lift huge blocks and carry heavy loads 
that would be beyond the strength of most Bedouins or members of other races. They are courageous, energetic, and generous, which are virtues of nobility, and also good-tempered and with little propensity to evil. They are always cheerful, smiling, and devoted, devoid of malice, which is a sign of noble character. Some people say that their generosity is due to their stupidity, short-sightedness, and lack of foresight, but our reply is that this is a scurvy way of commending generosity and altruism. At the rate, the wisest and most intelligent man would be the most stingy and ungenerous. But in fact, the Slavs are more stingy than the Byzantines, and the latter more intelligent and thoughtful. According to our opponent's argument, the Slavs ought to be more generous and open-handed than the Byzantines. Likewise, we see that women have less sense than men, and children have less sense than women, but are meaner than they are. If more sense meant greater meanness, then the child should be the most generous of all. Yet, in fact, we know nothing on earth that is worth than is worse than a boy, for he is the most untruthful of mankind, the most calumnious and nastiest and the meanest, the least inclined to do good, and the most ruthless. Only gradually does a boy leave these qualities as he gains in sense and gains in good deeds. How then can the lack of sense be the cause of generosity of the Zanj? You have admitted that they are generous, and then you make assertions which are unintentable, and we have already shown you the fallacy of your argument according to the true reasoning. This opinion would mean that the coward is wiser than the brave man, the treacherous wiser than the loyal, and the warrior is wiser than the patient man. This is something for which you have no proof. These qualities in man are a gift of God. Sense is a gift, and good character is a gift, and generosity and courage likewise. The Zanj say to the Arabs, You are so ignorant that during the Jihali, the times of ignorance, you regarded us as your equals when it came to marrying Arab women. But with the advent of the justice of Islam, you decided this practice was bad. Yet the Z desert is full of Zanj married to Arab wives and they have been princes and kings and have safeguarded your rights and sheltered you against your enemies. You have even sayings in your language which vaunt the deeds of our king's deeds and which you often placed above your own. This is this you would not have done had you not considered them superior to your own. al namar Abin Tualib recited the following poem. Bad luck came over us over his rule over the Tuba, and the great king Abra placed him higher than the princes of his own country. Labid Abin Radiz reciting the following, If a person could reach eternity during his lifetime, Abu Yuxim would be among those. The kind of virtue has never been ascribed to anyone before. The Zanj also say from Labid's verse, it becomes also clear that you put our kings higher than your own. Darkness came over those who survived from Mu'hari's family. Darkness that had done its worth, its work with Tuba and Heraclis. Darkness that had vanquished Abra, who was living in the palace of Makwali. So he prefers Abra, but he would like the other kings to be his equals. The Zanj say the Ethiopian Akim Abin Akim more eloquent than El Ajij. It is from him that the Syrians learnt the sciences and also from El Montangi Abin Nabin who was a native of Negro land and had a pierced ear. He had become to the Arabian desert as a child and left it with a complete knowledge of Arabic. Hakim Abin Asal al Zalib said don't feel pride in the maternal uncle from the Asad tribe, because even the Zanj and Nubians are more noble to have as uncles than they. Akim Abin Akim, the Abyssinians made the following response. On the day of the battle of Gumdun, we were like lions, and on the day of Yathrib, we were the stallions of the Arabs. On the fearful day of the elephant, the hearts of the Arabs deserted them, and they fled on their camels. The Negus is one of us. And Dal Esquan is your brother-in-law, the grandfather of Abra, the protector of Abu Talib, was one of us. I have to forgive Adanin if he makes fun with us, because what can be said of the genealogy of the Himyari? They are militaries assembled from everywhere, gathered as a net 
gathers fish in the stormy sea, gummen a fortress, ordinary the residence of the king, then Persian who reigned on Yemen. When Assyrian, when the Abyssinians seized Yemen, they let remain only the ruins which Uthman b. Afari, that Allah satisfied with him, destroyed at the time of the coming of Islam, while saying it is necessary to extirpate the vestiges of the Galil, the false prophet. The fortress comprised a cistern capped by a, a asbatos roof, of which Halif al Hamar said, and Aspatos cistern, which demolished by the attack in Abyssinian and the king about it. Qudami, the wise of the Muslim East and master of alchemy, has said, He lit its fire there. Nevertheless, fire would last indefinitely. The cistern does not disappear because asbestos, even if a fire burned there a thousand years, would not heat. Those which launched to Nephtha coat themselves with some. When they want to penetrate into the fire, Labidus says, O oh friendly, do you not see a flash illuminating the black night like the flame of the wick of the lamp? I could not find the sleep while the flash moved away towards Nagad and motionless night, and when the companions were held dormant on their saddles of wood, its shoddy cloud illuminated the heavy clouds and there cut out silhouettes of Abyssinians armed with small swaths and javelins. Labid says, he says, use this imagery because when the Ethiopians splendid in the blackness of their skins and in the vigor of their strength of their superb bodies attacked with their spears, bows, and arrows, they spread an unimaginable terror around them. When Ukman says, on the day of Yathrib, we were the stallions of the Arabs, it is in reference to Misrif Abin Ukwe al Amari, the general who gave the conquered city Medina over the troops for pillage, and the Negroes cohabited with the captured women, which are mentioned in the following verses of Mudard. Asked Musarif el Mekwani, the general, in question about the morning when he gave the captured virgins over to his weather beaten Negro soldiers on the occasion the Zanj fought you, whites, in spite of your age. Wakrog defended you with his Persians, whilst the Ethiopian general commanded in the midst of destruction. It was then that the women of your race were enjoyed by a negro, whose phallus was the size of a donkey's. When the poet says they are muleteers assembled from everywhere, gathered as a net gathers fish in the stormy sea, he here accepted that the storytellers about the Hemiar, that they used to be muleteers. The negroes can also be proud of the fact that they single that the single dead person over whom the prophet ever prayed was their ruler, the emperor of Ethiopia. He prayed for the Negus while the prophet was in Medina, and the tomb of the Negus in Abyssinia, and also the Negus is who gave in marriage to the prophet that blessing and safety of Allah be on him. Um Habi, girl of Uba Safayan, he asked Halid Said to be the tutor of Um Habib, offering in the name of the Prophet, how the blessing and the safety of Allah are on him, a dowry of 400 dinars, and also we made you three presents, the civet, the most sweet perfume, most exquisite and noblest, the litter, it is the best defense for the women and best protection for what is sacred for man, the codex, it preserves best its contents and ensures best preservation it is splendid and most handy and also we inspire the most fear in the heart and catch most of the glances of the onlookers just as the carriers of black abyssid inspire more fear and fill up more of the heart than the carriers of white umayyad in the same way the night inspires more fear than the day and also the color black always inspires the most fear the arabs to describe their camels say the black horses are the most beautiful and most robust the black cows best and most beautiful and their skin are most valuable most useful and most durable the black ewes give the fattest milk and the creamy moreover the dark brown ewes give the more milk than the russest red ooze while every stone and hill is drier and harder the more it is black the black lion is invincible the black date is the highest quality healthy date palms have black stems 
A hadith of the Prophet says, following the great black color, the poet Al Nasari says, I am in debt, but I do not have to worry because I own tall date groves, well pruned and heavily laden palm trees seems to have been smeared with the pitch of blood of sacrificed animals. The Zans say that the best green and the darkest green, God may he be exalted said, and besides there are two gardens when describing them so as to make their people long for them God called them dark green. Ibn Abbas said they became dark green through irrigation. Black ebony is the most solid and most durable of woods. It is also the most expensive, free of disease, best fit for artwork. It is so heavy that all of the woods expensive and cheap ones, only ebony skins in the water remember that even certain stones do not sink while ebony sinks immediately. A person remains handsome as long as his hair is still black, and in paradise everyone will have black hair. The pupils of the eye too are black, and they are not the most precious part of the human body. The most expensive coal is made of anatomy which is black. This is why a hadith of the prophet states that God will have all the faithful into paradise hairless on their body beardless and their eyes blackened with coal. Man doesn't have anything more useful on him than his liver which ensures a good operation of the stomach and the digestion of food then good functioning of the unit maintains the life of the body however the liver is black. Man does not have anything more valuable more expensive in him than the black bile of his heart. A clot of black blood situated in the folds of his internal organs. It holds in his heart the same place as the brain in his head. The woman does not have anything sweeter and more pleasant than her lips for kisses. However, they are all more beautiful as they are as close to the black as possible. Durama says Basit sunk are its lips blood colored and purple. Of the same are her gums fine and bright her teeth the most pleasant shade and freshest is the shade black the poet says Raguez jet black similar to the shade projected by the stone Humayyad Tawar says we sought the shade of a cave while our mounts sought the wood shade shaded on which would fall the evening trees and the major and the major shades like estic nuns who prohibit the wine Allah created the night for the rest and recovery and the day for the profit and the labor. One can also say that black is associated with activity as scorpions and snakes come out at night and bring their poison into the night. The activity counts for most wild animals and also ghosts. All of this happens during the nights. The blacks say we also resemble the night like this. They also say the greatest of the siestas that last the longest is in the darkness of the closed door and windows. They also say no color is deeper and homogeneous than black. A proverb to say that something is very fair. You will not see this until tar becomes white and the raven gray haired. According to the philosophers, black is the accident that fills the area. Musk and amber are the best perfumes. Both are black as are the hardest rock. Abu Dalid al-Jamari said the following lines in praise of al zadiq Mar Zumi, who was called Abid Abin Allah, Abin Abed Shamas, Abin Al Makari. Gratefulness to you is boundless as long as there are rocks in the valley of Lebanon. You will be the object of praise and precious value, just as there is no fault in the black stone. The Arabs draw glory from the black color. If an objector advances on what is that based as they say such is of pure white bursting of whiteness white and of clear face we will answer by this the arabs do not mean the whiteness of the skin but rather the nobility and purity of character the hadur of banu maharabi draw glory from their dark color and the people with the black dye are called among the arabs hudar al samini darar says the clamels leave in the evening zarud and the setting sun covered Zubala with the coat of the night. The poet says, until the moment when the morning draws me from the dark night, like the valiant knight who takes from the sleeve the well-soaked sword, 
The Arabs qualify the iron as dark because it is hard and that it is dark means black. al Harat Helazil says when we force our camels from the branches of palm tree in Baran, a race not stopped until al Sasad retains them. We then put to defeat the troop of the sons of Um Qatam, the ones with the dark weapons of Persia. Al Muhrabi said the following about the being of the member of the Karar clan. Every man of virtue knows I'm a member of the Karar clan, of the tribe of Quas, not easily to command, not enduring any justice, injustice, and mentally sharp. The clan of the Mokari or the Kador of the tribe of the Magzum. Al Makzumi spoke of the following lines, which were also from the Al Fadari Abin Al Abis Al Lehibi. I am the famous Al Qadar, very well known, the dark one of the land of the Arabs. Those finding me in a contest of adversary find a noble man, the one who fills the bucket to the knot and the rope. The Qadar of the Ghassan tribe or the royal house of Jafari in Haqassan said, According to Al Hakim, I am a descendant of the royal Qadar, of those who paid the blood money to those of Baras. Some poet, maybe Hassan, mentions the Qadari of the Hukma tribe, saying, You are not from the nobles of the clan Hashim, neither from the Jumar Qadari and the other powerful. The ten sons of Abrid Mutalib, the grandfather of Muhammad, were all black and strong. The Amir Abin al Tufali said that the Kabal was well guarded when he saw them on the black camels going around the Kaaba. Ibn Abbas was black and very tall. Those of Abu Talib's family, who are the most noble of men, are more or less black. Zan say the Prophet said, I will send to the red and the black, and everybody knows that the Zanj Abyssinians and the Nubians are surely not white or red, but definitely black. We know that Allah, the most powerful and exalted, sent his prophet to the people, all of them Arabs and non-Arabs alike, and if Muhammad said, I was sent to the ruddy Allah Mahari and the dark-skinned Allah Swad, then in his view we are neither ruddy nor light-skinned. Bid. So he was sent to us. Indeed, his use of the dark skin refers to us as the people of our community are in one of these categories, either ruddy or dark skinned. Therefore, if the Arabs are ruddy, then they belong with to the Byzantines, Slavs, Persians, and Corrosians. But if they belong to the dark skinned peoples, then they are a subcategory of our stock. So they are called medium complexioned and brownish black when they are classified with us as the Arabs use the masculine gender to refer to a group of consisting of females and males and if the Prophet may Allah be pleased with them knew that the Zanj, Ethiopians and Nubians were not ruddy or light-skinned rather dark-skinned and that Allah most high sent to him to the dark-skinned and the ruddy then surely he made us and the Arabs equals hence we are the only dark-skinned people if the appellation dark if the appellation of dark skinned applies to us, then we are the pure Sudan, and their Arabs only resemble us. Therefore, we are the first people to whom he was missioned. Thus, the appellation of the Arabs is predicted on first people to whom he was on ours, since we alone are designated dark skinned, and they are not so designated unless they are part of us. The Zanj also say the Arabs think that they are more people than better but we are the most numerous in the world and have the most children you can say there are two kinds of people among us among the Zans, the ants and the dogs trying to measure the amount of arabs with the amount of ants you will see that the ants are more numerous well then still add the dogs to that amount you really have to add on the people of abyssinia nubia fazan morari Zangwa and all the other black tribes. Quathan is far from Admin. We are closer kin to the Abyssinians, and our mothers are closer kin to those of Adin or the Katan. When talking about languages, the one of from a Jews of the Hazan tribe is very different. Languages can be very different but still have the same origin, or have different origins but resemble each other anyhow. 
The language in the different regions of the Quraj are different as well as those of Jalug and Faras. It is, all depends on the region, but they have the same origin. They say you have never seen the genuine Zanj. You have only seen captives whom came from the coasts and forests and valleys of Qumbula from our men menials, our lower orders, and our slaves. The people of the Kumbala have neither beauty nor intelligence. Kumbala is the name of the place by which your ships anchor. The natives in Balad Zanj are in both Kumbala and Lujuya, just as Arabs are descendants of Andan and Quatan in the Middle East. You have yet to see a member of Lequanti kind either from the coast of Al Swahili or from the interior of Al Juf. If you would meet these, you would forget the issue of fair looks and perfection. Now, if you refuse to believe us, saying that you have yet to meet a Zanj with the brains even of a boy or a woman, we will reply to you Have you ever met among the enslaved? of India and Sindhi individuals with brains, education, culture, and manners, so as to expect these same qualities in what has fallen to you from among the Zanj, yet you know how much there is in India of mathematics, astronomy, medical science, turnery, and woodwork, painting, and many other wonderful crafts. How does it happen that among many Indian captives you have made there has never been one of this quality, or even a tenth of this quality. If you say people of standing, intelligence, and knowledge only live in the center near the seat of government, there are hangers of uncouth types, peasants, people of the coasts and swamps and forests and islands, plowmen and fishermen. We answer you, the same is true of those who you see and those who you do not see of us. Our answer to you is as your answer to us. They say if a Zanj and a Zanj woman marry and their children remain after puberty in Iraq, they came to rule the roots thanks to their numbers, endurance, and knowledge and efficiency. On the other hand, the child of an Indian and an Indian woman, or a Greek and a Greek woman, or of a Kurdasani and a Kurdasani woman remain among you and your country in the same condition as their fathers and mothers. The child of the two Zanj parents does not remain thus after puberty, so that we do not find among ten thousand one who does what we said except when a Zanj mates with a non Zanji woman or a Zanj woman and with a non Zanji man. We were it not for the fact that neither the Zanj man nor the Zanji woman has much desire for people of other races, we would see an abundant progeny of Zanj men while Zanji women hardly respond to non-Zanji men. They say likewise you whites are not very active in seeking progeny from Zanji women and the Zanji woman falls pregnant more swiftly than the Zanji than to a white man. They say it hardly ever happens among that a man has a hundred children sprung from his loins unless it is a caliph and then it is because of the large number of his women. You don't find this among the rest of you. Among the Zan, so large a progeny would be not considered remarkable, for there are many such in their country as Zanji woman bears about 50 times in about 50 years, each bird being twins, so that there are more than 90. For it is said that women do not bear children when they reach 60, except for what is told of the women of Kawashi in particular. The Zanj are the most eager of all of God's creatures, for their women and also their women for them. They are also better compared to their other women. Please think about what we have said. We have used facts from history as arguments and explained or quoted poetry from Arabs and others. al farazadig was one of the specialists of women, and he had tried all races and remained unsatisfied. So he finally married Um Makai, the Zanj woman, and stayed with her, forgetting all others because of her qualities. He made the following verse. He quotes Arab poet Farzak. How many a tender daughter of the Zanj walk about with a hotly burning oven as broad as a drinking bowl. Then a year the daughter of about of Kwabali Al Kanzani lived with Ashi Zulum. She was extremely black. Once she dyed her hands with henna and her eyes with black coal, he made the following verse of it. She dies a palm of her hands 
palms as if clipped from her own forearm. She dyes a henna with her black color. She seems with the cola in her pencil as if she is applying coal to her eyes with part of her skin. She answered with the following poem, uglier than my color is the blackness of his ass, Con contrasting with his skin, which is like palm pith or even whiter. In the streets, they started calling him black and the street kids yelled it and he divorced her. The day of their wedding, he said, Dinars are of poor metal, and her response was, A white head is worse than my black color. The worst, however, are gray eyebrows. He kept quiet for some time and then attacked again. When she finally brought disgrace on him, he divorced her. They say if a white man look on black woman without desire, so too do black men look on white woman without desire. For passions, or habits and mostly convention. Thus, for the people of Basra, the most desirable women are Indians. The daughters of Indian women and Goris, for the Yemenis, the most desirable women are Ethiopians and daughters of Ethiopian women. For the Syrians, the most desirable women are the Greeks and the daughters of Greek women. Each people has a taste for their own women. They import as slaves and captains apart from the exceptions, and no inferences can be drawn from exceptions. The Negroes also have the sweetest breath and the greatest amount of saliva being in this respect like the dog as compared with other animals. The Zans say black delights the eye. When the eyes hurt, a common prescription is sitting in the dark with a rag over the eyes. Good eyesight is the most precious thing for a person. They say the blacks are more numerous than the whites. The whites are at the most consist of the people of Persia, Jabal, Koreshin, the Greek Slavs, Franks, and Navars, and some few others, not very numerous. The blacks include the Zanj, Ethiopians, the people of Fazan, the Berbers, the Copts, the Nubians, and the Zanguahi, Marari, Sand, and India, Kamar, and Dabala, China, and Masan. The islands and the seas between China and Africa are full of blacks, such as the Ceylon, Kalal, Amil, Zabaji, and their islands as far as India, China, Kabul, and those shores. They say al Hishtani, the blind man used to say, there are more blacks than whites, more rocks than mud, more sand than soil, more salt water than sweet water. They say the Arabs belong with us and not with the whites because their color is nearer to ours. The Indians are more bronze than the Arabs, and they belong to the blacks. For the prophet God bless and save him said, I was sent to the red and the black, and everyone knows that the Arabs are not red, as we already have stated above. He said that this advantage belonged to us and to the Arabs as against the whites. If the Arabs want it, if they do not want it, then the advantage is ours alone against the rest. The Zanj also say if we are more numerous because of Zabaj alone, we would still be far superior to you because of our merit. If it happens that a, Zan a king of Zabaj has problems with the citizens and they do not pay their taxes, he sends his army of thousands of people, not with orders to beat and fight them. He does give orders for soldiers to settle between them until they pay. His army is bothering the people so badly by taking food and clothing from them that it is easier to pay the taxes. If they still don't pay, he sends more regiments. The local rulers always wind up paying for fear, and its people will finally be destroyed by the army. Once the king of Zabad reached an estuary, which is several persings long and wide, in his camp he heard a woman crying. He interrupted his meal to go and ask what had happened. He was told that the son of the woman was eaten by a crocodile in the swamp. The king got angry because a creature existed that just like him took the right to decide on life or death of his people. He divided into the he dived into the water, all of his soldiers followed him. They finished every single crocodile in the place with their hands. The people of Zabaida alone are half the population on earth. On the ends of the inhabited world are all black people. These ends are more populated than the central area, just as the circumference of a windmill and the wind is bigger than the pivot of the windmill. It is like this balcony of a house. It is narrow, 
but as it goes all around the house its total area is bigger than the house itself after the land of Zabad there are no more white people as we have reached there the periphery of the world where all are black this is proof that we are more numerous than the whites and we have the right to be proud of it one of the white poets said you are not more than they in number and glory belongs to those bigger in number the Zans also say the cops too are blacks. Abraham, the friend of God, married one of them, and so was born a big prophet, the ancestor of the Arabs, Ishmael. The prophet, peace be upon him, also married one of them, and Abraham was born. The angel Gabriel, when addressing the prophet, called him father of Abraham. The Zans also say the black stone is from paradise. The darker a piece of copper, the more it is worth. To those who despise the color black, we would reply that the excessive lanky, thin, and reddish hair of the Franks, Greeks, and Slav, the redness of their locks and beard, the whiteness of their eyelashes, and the uglier and more loathsome, loathsome. there are no albinos among the blacks, but only among you. The Zanj also say, we also have philosophers from among us, as well as theologians, and we have fine manners. God, may he be exalted, did not make them black in order to disfigure them. Rather, it is their environment that made them so. The best evidence is this, is that there are more black tribes among the Arabs, such as the Banu Solomon bin Masur, and that all the people settled in the Herrera besides the Banu Solomon are black. These tribes take slaves from among the Ashbin to mend their flocks and for irrigation work, manual labor, and domestic service, and they take their wives from among the Byzantines, and yet it takes less than three generations for our region to give them all the complexion of Banu Solomon. This region is such that the gazelles, ostriches, insects, wolves, fox, sheep, asses, horses, and birds that live there are all black. White and black are the result of environment, the natural properties of water and soil, distance from the sun and intensity of heat. There is no question of metamorphosis or of punishment, disfigurement or favor meted out by Allah. Besides, the land of the Banu Solomon has much in common with the land of the Turks, where the camels, beasts of burden and everything belonging to these people is similar in appearance. Everything of theirs has a Turkish look. The soldiers of the frontier garrisons on the side of Eswim sometimes come across Byzantine sheep mixed with the sheep belonging to local inhabitants, but they have no difficulty in distinguishing the Byzantine flocks from the Syrian by their Byzantinity, which one comes across from the descendants of Bedouin men and women who have ended up in the Khorasan. It is immediately apparent that they are the barbarians of these parts. This exists in all things, thus we see the locusts and worms on plants are green, and we see that the loaves are in black on a young man's head, and wh white if his hair whitens, red if it is dyed. Our blackness, O people of Zanch, is not different from the blackness of the Banu Solomon and other Arab tribes we have mentioned, and the very blackness of the Zanj is like the total whiteness of the white men. The same rules applies to the brown color of the children of mixed marriages, also on their parents, their habitats, and eating and desires. A poet, when talking about the Usulam Ibn al Anilif al Asadi, mentioned that the blackness of the people of Yemen. There is Usulam Usalim, easily noticed by those searching. He belongs to the elite chiefs through his lines of descent. Others, then, in fear of his royal birth, clapped their hands. Black musk is applied to their hair as well as perfumed oil. If the black Yemenites would make him a woolen cloak, they have to make it thin and wide. A slave of the Bano Jada being laughed at because of his black color said, They ridicule me because of my black hair. I answered that only very stupid men can do so, because as much as my skin is black, I am in character white. I help friends in their deeds. Also as well as women traveling in their litters. When I have to face a fight, I am called father of Sarak, the wife of Amir Ibn Shai, treated Arir Ibn Amir badly because he was the son of a black woman. Did she not notice that I am grown up and humble so that I do not answer anger with anger? Like the courageous, I bow in silence. 
if a courageous man would find it proper he would bite deeply her aim was to humiliate a rear and those wanting to do so are very unjust although he is dark he has a very good figure if you really are like me and have principles then be for him like the date butter which smoothens the skin if not to get away even by horse with provisions for five days without rest stops as regards the indians they are among the leaders in astronomy mathematics in particular they have indian numerals and medicine they alone possess the secrets of the latter and use them to practice some remarkable forms of treatment they have the art of carving statues and painting figures they possess the game of chess which is the noblest of gains and requires more judgment and intelligence than any other they make Khadith swords and exile in their use they have splendid music including that of the Kanilkala an instrument with a single string mounted on a gourd which takes the place of many string lute and cymbals they know a number of sprightly dances to them belong the variety of arts from sword fighters to magicians and fumigators and medical skills they possess a script capable of expressing sounds of all languages as well as many numerals. They have a great deal of poetry, many long treaties, and a deep understanding of philosophy and letters. The book Qualil, while Demonim originated with them, they are intelligent and courageous and have more good qualities than the Chinese. Their sound judgment and sensible habitats led them to invent pens, cork, and toothpicks. The grape of the cloths and the dyeing of hair. They are handsome, attractive, and forbearing. Their women are proverbial, and their country produces the matchless Indian alloys which are supplied to kings. They were the originators of the science of Ficar, by which a poison can be counteracted after it has been used, and of astrono astro astronomical reckoning subsequently adopted by the rest of the world. When Adam descended from paradise, it was to their land that he made his way. The Zans also say among our good qualities are good singers, as you can find among the slave girls from Sinid. Also, nobody is better cook than the black slaves from Z Sinid. Also, money changers will never entrust their money than to those from Sinid or their descendants as they are found to be better in those affairs, more alert and worthy of trusting. One hardly ever finds a Greek or Khorasan in position of trust in a bank. When the bankers of Basara saw the excellent affairs of Faraj Abu Kab, a Sindhi, he negotiated for his master. Each of them took a Sindhi assistant. They all wanted to make a profit his master had made. Caliph Sultan Abul Malik Ibn Makari often said, Al Hakatami is a master among all the Orientals. The Al Akadgami is also mentioned by Abdullah Ibn. Kazim, who calls him an Ethiopian, a black son of Ethiopia, and this is that came all that came to my mind about what the blacks could be proud about. In former books, we wrote of the pride of the Kathan, and later on, if God wishes, I will write on the pride of the Adanam against the Kathan and much of what they said. All right, well, if you uh, listen to that whole thing, uh, let me give you a shout out and a special blessing on you and your knowledge. May you grow. May you grow in knowledge as I once did reading this. So what you see after uh, listening to this, reading through this is uh, a lot of historical facts, truths, and reference that we say today echoed in the uh, seven eight hundreds AD that mainly Al Jahiz uh, exclaims that the blacks were once in control of Arabia, Yemen, all of the Nile, that uh, most other races come from us, including the Chinese and the Arabs. Um, and there's something else that you don't see. You see that we have had a problem a very long time with slavery and uh, being looked down on. We've had it before the transatlantic slave trade, before the Arab slave trade, we had a problem where we fell apart, where we were once in control and we lost control of uh, the east of Africa, the Middle East, the world. We lost control of ourselves. 
um, my thought on it is that we lost control because slavery got out of control. Slaves were in such high demand from Africa that it became one of the major commodities and in that it ruined our namesake and that people around the world started to believe that all blacks were like the the villagers, the uh, low of the African society, the slaves that we sold. We sold so many that we ruined our own name and it's something that went on uh, until today. But thank you again for listening and blessings on you.